Simmons is now facing another murder charge. He's accused of killing a man in East Garfield Park Monday. WGN's Tanya Francisco joins us now with more on this story. Yeah, it kind of sounds like his public defender may argue that this was a case of self-defense. But prosecutors say the fact that the victim, or the suspect in this case, never called 911 to report that he thought he was being carjacked only adds to his guilt. Now he is charged with first-degree murder. Skycam 9 was over Bernard Berry's West Side home Monday as a SWAT team closed in. You can see the 75-year-old on the porch unraveling what looks to be a tube for an oxygen tank. Later, you see Barry sitting on the steps moments before he's arrested. Overkill for a 75-year-old? Turns out the septuagenarian has a lengthy criminal history, including previous convictions for murder. During his bond court this morning, prosecutors said Barry and another man were sitting in a parked car in the East Garfield Park neighborhood Monday afternoon when the victim, 42-year-old Tyron Evans, rode up on a bike, told them to get out of the car, and swung at Barry, who in turn shot Evans in the arm. The bullet passed through, hitting him in his side. He collapsed and died on the scene. Witnesses say Barry sped off. Prosecutors say Barry gave conflicting stories after he was arrested, but admitted to ditching the gun. The prosecutor says Barry has several prior convictions, including two for murder, one in 1970, another in 1975, and an aggravated discharge of a firearm conviction from 2005. Barry, who has chronic health issues, is suffering from asthma, high blood pressure, COPD, hypertension, emphysema, severe arthritis, and glaucoma on top of severe mobility issues. And now, if convicted, could be looking at a natural life sentence. The judge who expressed Hey folks, look at this, look at this. Here it is right now, sit back and think about it. This guy, Pop, 75 years old. It is, he was sitting in his car, him and his friend. Minding his own business. Minding his own business on that afternoon. Here it is. The victim came up riding a bike. See the guy. Or he see the car. And what he did is, you know what? He assumed it was an easy target. He assumed that he could just carjack, took the car from these individuals. Not knowing who was Pop. Not knowing that this senior citizen got a heck of a reputation, got a heck of a background. The difference is right now is, man, we as people got to know our audience. First of all, you know what? Listen, it's not right. If something's not yours, guess what? Leave it alone. Why are you trying to take something that don't belong to you? That's number one. That's when you violate and that's when you step out of line for rule number one. Rule number two is like, don't assume because somebody's a certain age or somebody might be Dis, you know, disability or disabled or handicapped, you feel you can take advantage of. You know what? That's a form of that bully mentality. And that's society. Society, I don't care who you are, what you are, what your nationality, what your gender, whatever. Guess what? That bully mentality exists in this world. And that got to stop. The difference is right now, this individual, the victim may his soul rest in peace and his spirit be lifted. My deepest condolences to him and his family. But the objective is he's seen a target. I don't know right now was what type of car it was. I didn't know right now was like what was his attention. But he went to this individual trying to take the car. Not knowing who this guy is. Not knowing his past. Not knowing this guy's strap. So he went over there. And, you know, from the report, they say he swung on the guy. And popped this... I guess had his gun out and his fire on him. Not meaning to kill him. He said he shot him in his arm and the bullet traveled and it killed him. So now the justice system, the judicial system is pissed off at Pop and they're not going for it. You know why they're not going for it? Because they say he didn't call 911, he just sped off. The difference is when you grow up to be or you have a certain belief system, Nobody believe in calling the cops. Nobody believe in picking up the phone, especially right now when, when you don't have, like, you know, saying negative effect, a negative contact. This man is right now, he got convicted, 1970, 1975, a murder. You think he gonna pick up the phone after he shot somebody? That's not in his DNA. That's not what it's all about. He know right now is, guess what? This guy was wrong. And the only thing he was doing was protecting what was his. Not saying that, 
he was like, you know, saying legal to carry a gun. Most likely he wasn't legal to carry a gun. So the difference is he's already in violation because of his prior felony conviction. But the fact is, okay, if he would have more or less like stood there, went to the nearest telephone call, nearest telephone, or got somebody's cell phone and called 911 or called the police station and report the incident, only thing he probably would have to worry about was possession of an illegal firearm. He probably wouldn't have to worry about the actual homicide. Now, because he didn't report it and he sped off, now he got to worry about the actual homicide. He got to worry about he killed this guy. Okay, so look at it, man. Is life or is the situation double standard? I think so. Because once again, if you just stay there, got the, made a phone call, listen, this guy started to rob me, you know, I shot him, guess what would have happened? He got a witness, he would have beat that. But he was probably got charged with having an illegal firearm. Okay, um, but being that he left the scene, because once again, his own mentality had been, he'd been fighting against the system all his life. So he know how it goes. So automatically, who's going to believe him? He didn't even, was, he wasn't even thinking. He didn't even expect that that happened the way it happened, but it happened. A lot of times when we walk out the door, we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know whether we're going to go back home alive or dead. We don't know on our way to work, on our way to school, on our way on a date, on our way to the movie, on our way out to hang out, whether we're coming back home. We don't know whether here it is right now, we're going to get shot. We're going to get killed. We're going to get hit by a car. We're going to get striked by lightning. Um, right now is, uh, 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 here it is right now is something might break out in a club and you might get, you know what I'm saying, trampled on. You don't know. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what's going to happen when you leave out that house, whether you're going to come back in. So the difference is what people got to understand, do not never judge a book by a cover. Because once again, you look at this individual right now, he look at this guy, you know, he's a goon. So he look at these senior citizens, easy target. He look at these kids on the street, easy target. He look at these people in the wheelchair, easy target. He look at anybody that you can take advantage of as an easy target. But you know what? That's not always the case, folks. Listen, stop that bully mentality. Stop thinking we can take advantage of people. Stop. That's for suckers. Suckers take advantage of people. How do we protect one another? How do we help one another? How do we build each other up? Right now, that man could have still been alive. If he would have stopped, listen, Pop, can y'all give me a ride? I'm running late to work. You know, can I park my bike right here? And can y'all give me a ride, you know what I'm saying, to my job? Or, you know what, listen, man, can y'all guys help me out or whatever? I got to get to the hospital. My girl about to have a baby. Whatever the situation may be, we don't know what the situation was. Only thing we know is that man is dead now because he stopped and opposed to him communicating effectively and properly. He got on that goon stuff and tried to take something that didn't belong to him. And look what happened. Not knowing who his opposition is. Not knowing that this individual who's already... Guess what? He was a killer from years ago. A lot of times people, what you have to do is take your time. Look people in the eyes. The eyes do not lie. I try to tell people that all the time. If you take the time and look at someone and you look them in the eyes, guess what? The eyes do not lie. You can see a lot of things. You can see certain things like, you know what? Listen, I'm not going to even mess with that individual because right now, as I'm looking into his eyes, I can see that it go deeper than the original surface. I can see that something is trouble about that man or that woman or that child. It's there. But the difference is you got to know what you're looking for. Listen, folks, hit that like button. Subscribe to my channel. My name is Brian Blaze Gibbs. This is my ministry. And let me tell you something. I am not your typical minister. Get your signed copy of the Beyond Lucky book, The Brian Glaze Gibbs Story. A true story of change and redemption. Crack, money, you know what I'm saying, murder. If I can change, anybody can change. You know why, folks? Could change come from within. If you look at it, look at that individual. Okay, cool. Here it is right now, he changed. The difference is right now, the last conviction they talked about he had, murder in 70, murder in 1975. This is 2021. Okay, 2021, 46 years later. He was out. Mine has business, and it's his own car. When somebody stopped and trying to take his car from him, and look what happened. Folks, take it for somebody that know, crime doesn't pay. Hit that like button, subscribe. 
Let's stop making that multi-billion dollar prison system our permanent address. I was once the problem. Now what I'm seeking to do, be part of the solution. Crime doesn't pay. One love.